nerds, Jasmine and Brandon here with your comic book news and reviews. Hey guys, Bobby and Covey here. We just wanted to take a moment to talk about our favorites in the 52 so far, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, what yeah. our favorites are. Mine yeah. definitely is Green Lantern number one. Oh, dude, that was an awesome book. That was a really, really good book, and it's just kind of showing Jeff Johns. He's here to stay. He knows what he's doing. He, he was not going to touch that continuity with all the stuff that's been going on Green yeah. Lantern for the past six years. So it's it's cool that that book still on hitting the mark. Black, Blackest Night was one of the hugest things for it was Green Lantern. Crazy. And for it, them, was, it was oh, the man. DC event centered around Green Lantern. Oh, yeah. that's, that's the coolest part about it. And they like, haven't had one of those in zero hours. In zero. <laughs> I mean, really, like, that was the last one, and that yeah. that had a huge consequences. It was a big event. I mean, it was a 90s event, and you can say it was kind of crappy for its time, but it really wasn't. It, I mean, those story beats, those story plot lines were still affecting, you know, comics to this day, or when said before this relaunch, so. I almost feel like uh, Jeff Johns uh, decided to stay on this book just so he can first and foremost make sure that no one screws up the character. Yeah, no. I, Especially I really don't with think the it... first issue. Being it uh, continuing from his own, you know. His uh, universe, his yeah. everything that he made. Another book I know you're really excited about, and I kind of enjoyed it, and I want to see where it goes, uh, Red Lanterns. Oh, yeah. It was a really good book. Um, personally, I don't see how far it can go. It doesn't seem like it has a lot of potential in terms of being like a 100-issue arc or 100-issue run. Actually, I hope it doesn't do that. Yeah, I hope yeah, it stays in I don't think arc. it's going to go that far. I don't think it's going to be as massive as Green Lanterns. Um, it's just kind of like if you want more info on this whole mythos, on this whole section of this cosmic, just this tiny section of the giant cosmic DC universe, um, the Red Lanterns is pretty cool. If, if you if you have rage in your heart, like most people do, then you would probably enjoy it. Plus, plus Dex Star, yeah. Plus it's got Dex Star the cat. Dude, he's so sweet. As atrocious as his pet cat, I mean that's yeah. That's yeah, it's like so it's cool. literally his like his pet cat, but he also like does his own stuff. He's also a Red Lantern. I mean, yeah, he's, he's a Red Lantern. That's so sweet. Another one that uh, that I'm really excited about was uh, Stormwatch. Stormwatch was really cool. I at first uh, I like wrote this book off. I didn't think it was gonna be anything, but um, but being a fan of the, the the Authority with like the Warren Ellis, yep. uh, Brian Hitch run, and the John Cassidy run, Planetary, all that crap. Um, it was it was really awesome, and Martian Manhunter being a part of that team, yep. so sweet. But he's just one of the coolest characters ever. He can totally beat up Superman and Apollo, and I hope that they actually like really throw down. Yeah, that was one. Uh, Stormwatch was actually one of the uh, the books DC was boasting about because it's meshing two different universes together with Martian Manhunter. Bringing and, it all uh, in, and, and, all and, and like yeah, it's it's kind of wrinkling or yeah, like evening out the, all the wrinkles and making sure everything's smooth. Grifter was one, another one that's coming from, you know, another universe, but it doesn't get combined with more DC characters. So Not that's, really. That's why Stormwatch kind of sticks out, you know, yeah, in that way. And also cool. another good one is Frankenstein. Frankenstein! Whoa! Whoa! Oh my God. Insane. So sweet. Agent of Shade, which is sweet. It's like a, a, a monster version of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh yeah. Which is so sweet and they all they do is fight monsters. I mean, we got one issue and the Creature Commandos show up, which are one of the coolest things ever. It's just the original movie monsters, the creature from Black Lagoon, the werewolf, the vampire, the mummy, as superheroes. And these are like updated versions of them. Like they, had, they had them in like the 40s and 50s, but this is like the but updated version. But it's cool version. that Frankenstein like remembers his history. You know, yeah. he remembers- oh, yeah, he remembers like everything. Everything that you know about Frankenstein, he, you know, points to in this book. And he's so, like, these aren't the monsters I like knew. The, like, you're, these are bastard versions of them. And it's cool that he calls them out, and they're like, dude, like the werewolf, like straight up comes up to him, and is like, dude, you're you're my hero. No, you're the reason why I did everything and why I did this. And it's it's kind of cool that he actually has like groupies and like like a like a fan base. So yeah, I'm excited. Speaking of that. speaking of fan base, is Detective Comics that last page crazy? Crazy Batman. With Greg Capullo artwork. Even crazier last page. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. needless to say, the 52 are awesome so far. There have been some ones that I could miss on. Yeah, um, you're going to get that, though. For you're the most part, yeah, for the most part, they've been pretty damn good. What do you guys think? Tell us in the comments below. And be sure to uh, stay tuned to nerdlocker.com because we're going to be constantly updating um, for probably this, the rest of the month with uh, mm -hmm. with all these reviews for the, for the books coming up. We're so. going to give you our own personalized opinions about all 52, so. But let it, we want to know what you guys think. We want to know what the fans think. Hey guys, Brandon here with my comic review for the week. I got Batman number one, part of the new DC 52. This book is incredible. Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo were born to do Batman. I am hooked on this. I cannot wait to see what happens. And if you thought Detective had a cliffhanger ending, just wait till you read this. 
Five out of five nerd skulls. Can't wait for more. Hey guys, Bobby here with my comic reviews for the week, and my first one is going to be Witch Doctor number three. As you all know, I have been loving this book, but uh, with this with this third issue, it is especially amazing because uh, Lucas Kettner is continuing his amazing art, and it even gets more influential in this title. Uh, the Doctor, the Witch Doctor in this book has so much attitude, so I'm very quickly falling in love with his character. So I think you all should be reading Witch Doctor. I'm going to give it four out of five nerd skulls. My second comic review for the week is going to be Red Wing number three. The great and powerful Jonathan Hickman is writing this book, and uh, as, I, as I've said before, I really do love it, but uh, with this third issue, I'm getting more and more confused. There's a lot of big words and a lot of uh, stuff you have to understand with the story in the previous two issues, which I understand, but um, there was no previously at the beginning of the book, so I don't carry around one and two with me at all times, so I can give myself a little uh, rehash on what happened. So I'm finding myself very confused in this title. Um, I feel like I should be studying vocab words before I go and read another issue. Um, with each page that I turn, it is a devastating reveal, so I, I feel like, I'm, like it's amazing what I'm looking at, but I still don't get it 100%. Um, so I'm actually going to give this three out of five nerd skulls, but only because I have to look back at the first and second issue. Steven here with some comic book reviews. I reviewed All Nighter number four. Granted, I hadn't read one, two, and three, so this is kind of like from the opinion of just getting in there, but I am liking it. It's not as much of like a superhero story or like a zombies attacking, it's just people living life with an interesting twist of the girl being stealing stuff. But the cool thing is in this one is it brings a lot of her past into it about ties that she didn't know she had with certain people. It was a more emotional one, leaving a cliffhanger at the end that was, it was just, it was a good story. Like, it was a good all-around story. I highly recommend it. I'm gonna give it four out of five skulls. Okay, so for my second comic review, it was actually a double review Kelly and I both read, which is Game of Thrones number one. Kelly being a Game of Thrones fan, and me never watching anything. Or reading. Or reading anything Game of Thrones. So, what did you think? Okay, so uh, well, I thought it would be interesting for us both to give our perspective on the comic because he knows nothing about the world I do. Um, I've read the books, I've watched the series. I don't understand who thought it would be a good idea to translate this world into comic book form. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea, it can translate well, but uh, George R. R. Martin's books are so um, full of history and details and character development. It just, in a shortened format, because I don't think they plan on carrying this out a long way because in the first, uh, in the first book, it's, uh, they skip through a lot and it's really, really compact. And I just, I didn't like it as a fan, so I wanted to see what somebody thought who doesn't know anything about it. Now, given I'm not really into the whole magic and mysticism kind of stories and stuff to begin with, like any of the medieval stuff, I, I, I found this book incredibly hard to read. I really couldn't get into it. And it wasn't even, you know, a good example, Demon Knights recently by DC's 52. That's all medieval and talky like that, all proper. And I thought it was fun. I couldn't get through this. I mean, I, I did it, but man, it was hard. Well, and the funny thing is, is a lot of the text in the comics sounds like it comes straight from the books, but they're just skipping over it so seems, much detail. It, it, that's what it seemed like, is like things were happening with no explanation or no follow-up. And I, I was just left scratching my head when I got to the end of it. And I didn't even like the art of it. I, it, I didn't think the art was terrible. Like, it, it was a lot better than I thought a comic book like that would be. So I will give it a little, you know, a couple points for art, but I just, yeah, I couldn't get through it. It was very hard. And it ends on a page where I turned it and I thought there was going to be more. Yeah. It, it's not a shock anything. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, what? they they threw like three huge stories in the first book, like yeah. right into this really small comic book. Anyway, it would be really interesting to hear what some of you guys think. So please uh, comment. But I'm going to give it Two out of five nerd skulls. Oh, I wouldn't even, I did one. One out of five. All right. Hey there, guys. Cubby here with my comic reviews this week. First book, Ultimate X-Men number one. This book was awesome, I gotta say. I love the Ultimate X-Men run from the beginning to probably about like the third volume. It was really, really good start. It got really crazy, and I'm a huge X-Men fan of the original series of the original regular Marvel Universe. 
So I was excited to see what happened with this, this new number one. It's not a reboot, it's not anything like that, it's just uh, picking up where the story left off. If for those not in the know, Ultimatum happened, and that was pretty much Magneto being pissed off at the world, flooding it, causing just massive destruction, and pretty much killing everyone. Um, this has left the world in kind of like a state of hating mutants, of course. They have to hate them, that's, that's kind of like why mutants work. But um, um, we kind of opened up to Jean Grey in a different identity. She has to change her identity because of everything that's going on. And she uh, is like recruiting this girl and it's just insane what happens within the first like 10 pages of the book. It's ridiculous, probably one of the most shocking scenes I've seen in comics in, in a while, in a good long while. So definitely pick it up. It has more substance to it than that. It has a lot more, um, it has a lot more potential later on. I, I can't wait to see where this goes because it looks pretty awesome. Um, I don't want to give too much of the story away, but definitely go check it out. I'm going to give it three out of five nerd skulls. So my second book this week is going to be uh, Teen Wolf number one. This is an MTV Comics produ production, whatever. I got to say right now, don't bother. Don't bother. Teen Wolf is such an awesome 80s movie. Michael J. Fox and Teen Wolf 2 with Jason Bateman. I mean, come on. Those are awesome, great classic movies. And MTV is pretty much just destroying everything that was cool about this. Uh, I, I understand it's for an another generation. I understand it's for different people. I understand it's not supposed to be the same Teen Wolf. But you're just kind of making it like an Abercrombie commercial with a werewolf in it. It's like Twilight for people that are more dumb than the people that read Twilight. So I really don't understand it. I mean, you kind of explain, like, they start off explaining this guy and, and, and this character, Scott McCall, explaining he's a werewolf. Halfway through the issue, they explain again, he just got bit by a werewolf the other day and he's now a werewolf for the rest of his life, blah, 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 blah. They, they explain that this girl, Allison, he's totally in like with and he, she digs him and they pretty much repeat it every time she shows up in the book again. Unnecessary. The art, while the, the artist I can see knows his body uh, poses, knows his form, knows like flow, that he has like these great lacrosse scene, um, scenes that, that really show how players do play, but it looks like crap. Uh, his faces kind of just don't work. Um, he doesn't do expression well, or at least it's really muddled, and I, I, just, I just couldn't stare at it. Plus, um, in the comic that I read, they had just these random ads for uh, t MTV shows, which I'm stoked for, because I want to see Beavis and Butthead and all these other things, but really, it kind of just interrupts the flow, and it seemed like after all these ads, it kind of jumped to another part of the story, and it didn't continue with a cliffhanger or something. So, this, this book was kind of like a chore for me to read, um, a chore for me to look at, a chore for me to even consider reading, and I have to give this one nerd skull. Hey there, nerds. Jasmine here with my comic book reviews for the week. The first one is Near Death Number One. It's an image book, and I gotta say, I really liked it. Uh, nothing to do with superheroes or the like. It's actually sort of like a, an assassin who has uh, out-of-body experience after his heart stops for about a minute, and he sees all the people that he killed, and he's told sort of to take this fresh start and do something else with his life. And instead of killing people, he decides to start saving them. And it was really good. Art was all right. It was a very good story that had a little bit of gore and a lot of humanity, and I really liked it. I'm gonna give it four out of five nerd skulls. Definitely check it out. My next book is The Young Avengers Children's Crusade number seven. I have loved this book since every issue, every issue has been amazing, and this one does not disappoint. I've never, no, not had a problem with having to wait months in advance for books. And this one totally, I don't even care. Take a year. But the story is always great and it's always totally worth it. And the last page of this book is such a good surprise and I cannot wait for all of this to be inside Marvel continuity because things are going to get crazy. Very stoked. If you're not reading this book, go get all the other issues, check them out. They're amazing. Five out of five nerd skulls. I love it. All right, guys, that is going to do it for all our comic book news and reviews this week. But until next week, be sure to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube page, as well as checking out nerdlocker.com for all your comic book news. And we'd also like to thank Maximum Comics for providing some of our books this week. If you're in the local Las Vegas area, they have two convenient locations. Be sure to check them out. I'm Brandon. And I'm Jasmine. And we'll see you next week. Yeah.